This is what sits inside your injector. Uh, your nozzle would sit on this side, attach in here, and that's the uh, spring and activator, the pins to hold it in place. The other side, uh, this goes back up to the valve uh, core, and that slides inside of there. There's two pins that line up. You notice at the top of the fuel plate, uh, there's a, a ball bearing that fits in there. That's part of the fuel metering plate. This one's beat up a little bit. It must have had some uh, dirt in it while it was uh, uh, being fired at some point in its lifetime. Between the two of them, there's two fuel plates here. There's a little hole in this one, and that's the one that controls the metering into the plunger area. But there's a little square or rectangular piece. That sits inside of that, or just on the inside of that hole, and that's what, that's what provides metering, that and the ball bearing, to the injector. So it would sit, I'll well, get a good angle for you to see that, kind of like that. And then this part basically sits, uh, that's the spring that's used to control the, uh, uh, sp the uh, nozzle so that it uh, holds back when the, for the pressure. This is the little piece that sits on top of it. Goes right in there like so. Uh, the spring on the other side, um, you have a little, a little uh, tip that sticks out, and that's what uh, moves back and forth against your, uh, against your nozzle, providing, providing force so that it uh, does what it's supposed to do. And this is a fairly tight spring. It's very, very tough to push. And that's controlled when you screw on your injector body onto this, it, uh, the threads, it pulls it in place. So to put this back together again, you just align the pins up, put it on like so, make sure the pins go in the hole, put this one back on with the ball bearing in the right place. Don't flip it upside down the wrong way. And then this would sit right on top of the injector core, like so. And inside of here, you can see the plunger. This plunger is set back. Uh, this is a modified injector. It's uh, basically set to give 178 cc's of fuel uh, per thousand stroke. And that's the external portions and internal portions of the injector. If you look over here closely, you can see that there's a hole here with an indent and another hole. That one goes straight through to the plunger chamber. And then this other one does the same thing. Um, I don't have it apart in this particular video, but we'll probably do it on another one. Effectively what happens is when the plunger fires, it moves forward in this hole, squirting fuel into the fuel injector nozzle. Um, that hole, some people call it a spill port, the reality is that hole provides uh, relief for the fuel because it's squeezed out at uh, anywhere between 15 to uh, 26 or 27,000 psi. There's going to be some bleed back through the, through the clearance between the plunger and the hole. And to prevent that fuel from being squeezed back up into the oil side of this, there's a relief valve right there and there's another one right there. Those are the two things that provide uh, support so that any fuel that does come back through it is going to spill back out into the open body of this, uh, which is where your fuel normally comes in and just recirculates before it gets uh, charged into the uh, injector core. If you look and notice up here, uh, that hole there is, uh, is a bleed hole for the oil side because there's a plunger in here. Uh, the intensifier piston moves over top of the little plunger. When it comes down, it bottoms out just after it hits that. So effectively creates a hydraulic cushion uh, so that uh, the metal to metal contact is uh, minimized when the injector is uh, firing. And that's about all from this one.